The Children's Health Insurance Program CHIP, formerly known as the State Children's Health Insurance Program CHIP, is a program administered by the United States Department of Health and Human Services that provides matching funds to states for health insurance to families with children. The program was designed to cover uninsured children in families with incomes that are modest but too high to qualify for Medicaid. The program came in response to the failure of comprehensive health care reform proposed in 1993 by President Bill Clinton. The legislation to create it was sponsored by Senator Ted Kennedy in a partnership with Senator Orrin Hatch, with support coming from First Lady Hillary Clinton during the Clinton administration. At its creation in 1997, SHIP was the largest expansion of taxpayer-funded health insurance coverage for children in the U.S. since Lyndon Johnson established Medicaid in 1965. The statutory authority for CHIP is under Title 21 of the Social Security Act. States are given flexibility in designing their CHIP eligibility requirements and policies within broad federal guidelines. Some states have received authority through waivers of statutory provisions to use CHIP funds to cover the parents of children receiving benefits from both CHIP and Medicaid, pregnant women, and other adults. CHIP covered 7.6 million children during federal fiscal year 2010, and every state has an approved plan. Despite CHIP, the number of uninsured children continued to rise, particularly among families that cannot qualify for CHIP. An October 2007 study by the Vimo Research Group found that 68.7% of newly uninsured children were in families whose incomes were 200% of the federal poverty level or higher as more employers dropped dependents or dropped coverage altogether due to annual premiums nearly doubling between 2000 and 2006. Vimo cites the Kaiser Commission on Medicaid and the Uninsured when it says 48% of the newly uninsured were not eligible for any kind of public coverage, and that only those in the lowest income bracket might offset the loss of employer-sponsored coverage with increases in Medicaid and SHIP. In FY 2008, the program faced funding shortfalls in several states. Two attempts to expand funding for the program were vetoed by President George W. Bush, who argued that such efforts were steps toward federalization of health care and would steer the program away from its core purpose of providing insurance for poor children and toward covering children from middle class families. On February 4, 2009, President Barack Obama signed the Children's Health Insurance Reauthorization Act of 2009, expanding the health care program to an additional 4 million children and pregnant women, including lawfully residing immigrants without a waiting period. A 2018 survey of the existing research noted that the availability of CHIP coverage for children has led to improvements in access to health care and to improvements in health over both the short run and the long run. As of February 2018, the CHIP program has been authorized to continue through the year 2027. Topic: History. The Children's Health Insurance Program grew out of years of work in the U.S. Congress to improve Americans' health coverage. Almost a decade prior, the U.S. Bipartisan Commission on Comprehensive Health Care was formed in 1989 and charged with recommending legislative action to ensure coverage for all Americans. The Commission, renamed the Pepper Commission in honor of its creator and first chair Representative Claude Pepper D. Florida, laid out a blueprint to achieve universal coverage. 
Given the challenges of comprehensive health reform, Governor J. Rockefeller, who was elected chair following Rep. Pepper's death, emphasized his commitment to pursue legislative action not only on the Commission's full set of recommendations but also on a «down payment» to expand public health coverage immediately for children and pregnant women, consistent with the principles the Commission put forward. The legislation would guarantee public insurance coverage through Medicaid for every American child living in poverty and offset the cost of the improvements by doubling the federal excise tax on cigarettes. Quickly after his election in 1992, President Bill Clinton assembled a task force to write a comprehensive health reform bill, and he worked with Congress to introduce the Health Security Act HSA in November 1993. It included provisions such as universal coverage and a basic benefit package, health insurance reform, and consumer choice of health plans. After the HSA failed in the fall of 1994, congressional leaders and the administration recognized the need for an incremental, bipartisan approach to health care reform. Senator J. Rockefeller continued to argue for expanded coverage for children. He referenced an amendment for accelerated coverage children and pregnant women offered during the Senate Finance Committee's health care reform markup that was adopted by a bipartisan majority of 12 to 8 as evidence that there was bipartisan support to provide assistance to children. He also went on to say expanding coverage for children was essential to reforming the welfare system to prevent families from having to go and off welfare to qualify for Medicaid. The 1996 bipartisan budget agreement made net reductions in federal Medicaid spending over a five year period but anticipated an additional $16 billion in spending on children's health care over the same period. However, it did not provide details on how that money would be spent. In 1997, several members of Congress introduced bills to cover uninsured children using that $16 billion, and the two most popular proposals were the Chaffee-Rockefeller proposal and the Kennedy-Hatch proposal. Senator Ted Kennedy, chairman of the Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Help, was intrigued by a children's health insurance plan in Massachusetts that had passed in 1996, and met with a Boston Medical Center pediatrics director and a Massachusetts state legislator to discuss the feasibility of a national initiative. Kennedy also saw using an increase in tobacco taxes as a way to pay for the expanded coverage. Thus, in October 1996, Kennedy introduced a bill to provide health care coverage for children of the working poor, to be financed via a 75 cents a pack cigarette tax increase. Kennedy brought Republican Senator Orrin Hatch onto the legislation as a co sponsor. Kennedy and Hatch had worked together as an «odd couple» in the Senate before, and here Hatch said that «children are being terribly hurt and perhaps scarred for the rest of their lives» and that «as a nation, as a society, we have a moral responsibility» to provide coverage. Hatch's role would infuriate some Republican colleagues and conservative commentators. On April 8, 1997, Senators Kennedy and Hatch introduced S-525, the Child Health Insurance and Lower Deficit Act, Child. This legislation amended the Public Health Service Act to create a new grant program for states to purchase private health insurance for children. It proposed to raise $30 billion over five years by raising the tobacco tax with $20 billion going to expanded coverage for children under a block grant approach and $10 billion for deficit reduction. S. 525 was referred to the Senate Health Education Labor and Pensions Help Committee. 
Hearings were held on the bill in the HELP Committee but legislation to expand coverage for children was never acted on in the HELP Committee. On April 30, 1997, Senators John Chaffee and J. Rockefeller introduced S-674, a bill to amend Title 19 of the Social Security Act to expand health coverage of low-income children and pregnant women and to provide funds to promote outreach efforts to enroll eligible children. On the same day, Representative John Dingell D. Introduced an identical bipartisan companion bill in the House of Representatives with Republican co sponsor, Representative Margaret Scafati Rukma. Meanwhile, in December 1996, First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton examined several possible initiatives and decided expanding health care insurance to children who had none was the one to advance, especially as its focus on children would be politically popular. This had precedence from earlier in the Clinton administration. A different variant of this approach, dubbed Kids First had been envisioned as a backup plan during the original 1993 Task Force on National Health Care Reform meetings. Additionally, Hillary Clinton had discussed an ship-like program with a White House health policy coordinator during the time her full-blown health care plan had suffered political failure. The new initiative was proposed at Bill Clinton's January 1997 State of the Union address, with the stated goal of coverage up to 5 million children. Kennedy continued to write much of the bill, using the increase in tobacco taxes to pay the $20 billion price tag. In March 1997, Kennedy brought Republican Senator Orrin Hatch onto the legislation as co sponsor. Kennedy and Hatch had worked together as an odd couple in the Senate before, and here Hatch said that children are being terribly hurt and perhaps scarred for the rest of their lives", and that, "...as a nation, as a society, we have a moral responsibility..." to provide coverage. Hatch's role would infuriate some Republican colleagues and conservative commentators. The First Lady did not hold news conferences or testify before Congress on behalf of the bill. An initial objection of Republicans in the Senate was that proposing to pay for the services by raising the federal tax on cigarettes, from 24 cents a pack to 67 cents a pack, ignored the likely consequence that sale of tobacco products would decrease and tax revenues would increasingly fall short of those needed to pay for the expansion of benefits. Kennedy and Hatch scoffed at the objection, with the former saying, if we can keep people healthy and stop them from dying, I think most Americans would say, Amen, isn't that a great result? If fewer people smoke, states will save far more in lower health costs than they will lose in revenues from the cigarette tax. Republicans also criticized the bill as an open-ended entitlement program, although it was structured as a block grant rather than an entitlement. Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott was an early opponent of the measure, calling it a big government program that would not pass, then the bill had to comply with the existing balanced budget agreement between Congress and the White House, something that Lott said it did not. Pressure was on to reduce the amount of grants involved, with $16 billion a possible compromise, Hillary Clinton instead argued for $24 billion. The Clinton administration had a deal with the Republican leadership in Congress that forbade the administration from backing any amendments to the budget resolution. Thus, Bill Clinton phoned members of Congress and asked that they kill the children's health insurance provision when it came to the floor. 
On May 22, it was so done, with the necessary cigarette tax amendment defeated by a 55 to 45 margin. Hillary Clinton defended her husband's action at the time, saying, he had to safeguard the overall budget proposal. But Kennedy was surprised and angered by it, considering it a betrayal, and saying that his calls to Bill Clinton and Vice President Al Gore had not been returned. Hatch was also upset, saying that Lott may have been bluffing and that, I think the President and the people in the White House caved here. Kennedy did not give up on the measure, saying, We shall offer it again and again until we prevail. It's more important to protect children than to protect the tobacco industry. Both Bill and Hillary Clinton argued for including the children's health insurance in subsequent legislation. The bill was indeed revived by Kennedy and Hatch a month after its initial defeat. Organizations from the Children's Defense Fund to the Girl Scouts of the USA lobbied for its passage, putting public pressure on Congress. Hillary Clinton was pushing for it as well, with Kennedy urging her to use her influence within the White House. SHIP was then passed and signed into law by Bill Clinton on August 5, 1997, as part of the Balanced Budget Act of 1990 to take effect the following month. At a press conference following the signing, Kennedy thanked Hatch, Senate Minority Leader Tom Dashley, Children's Defense Fund head Marion Wright Edelman, Bill Clinton, and Hillary Clinton. About the last, Kennedy said. Mrs. Clinton was of invaluable help both in the fashioning and the shaping of the program and also as a clear advocate ship is located at title iv subtitle j of hr 2015 105th balanced budget act of 1997 hr 2015 was introduced and sponsored by rep john Kasich ro with no co-sponsors on 25 June 1997, H.R. 2015 passed House Vote Roll No. 241 mainly among partisan lines, 270 ayes and 162 nays, with most Democrats in the House of Representatives in opposition. On the same day, the bill passed in the Senate, with a substitute amendment, by unanimous consent. After a conference between the House and Senate, passage in both House Roll No. 345-346-85 and Senate Roll No. 209-85-15 on the conference substitute became more bipartisan. <laughs> State administration Like Medicaid, SHIP is a partnership between federal and state governments. The programs are run by the individual states according to requirements set by the Federal Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. States may design their SHIP programs as an independent program separate from Medicaid separate child health programs, use SHIP funds to expand their Medicaid program SHIP Medicaid expansion programs, or combine these approaches SHIP combination programs. States receive enhanced federal funds for their SHIP programs at a rate above the regular Medicaid match. By February 1999, 47 states had set up SHIP programs, but it took effort to get children enrolled. That month, the Clinton administration launched the Ensure Kids Now campaign, designed to get more children enrolled. The campaign would fall under the aegis of the Health Resources and Services Administration. 
By April 1999, some one million children had been enrolled, and the Clinton administration set a goal of raising the figure to 2.5 million by 2000. States with separate child health programs follow the regulations described in Section 42 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 457. Separate child health programs have much more flexibility than Medicaid programs. Separate programs can impose cost sharing, tailor their benefit packages, and employ a great deal of flexibility in eligibility and enrollment matters. The limits to this flexibility are described in the regulations, and states must describe their program characteristics in their ship state plans. Out of 50 state governors, 43 support ship renewal. Some states have incorporated the use of private companies to administer portions of their ship benefits. These programs, typically referred to as Medicaid-managed care, allow private insurance companies or health maintenance organizations to contract directly with a state Medicaid department at a fixed price per enrollee. The health plans then enroll eligible individuals into their programs and become responsible for assuring SHIP benefits are delivered to eligible beneficiaries. In Ohio, SHIP funds are used to expand eligibility for the state's Medicaid program. Thus all Medicaid rules and regulations including cost sharing and benefits apply. Children from birth through age 18 who live in families with incomes above the Medicaid thresholds in 1996 and up to 200% of the federal poverty level are eligible for the SHIP Medicaid expansion program. In 2008, the maximum annual income needed for a family of four to fall within 100% of the federal poverty guidelines was $21,200, while 200% of the poverty guidelines was $42,400. Other states have similar SHIP guidelines, with some states being more generous or restrictive in the number of children they allow into the program. With the exception of Alaska, Idaho, North Dakota and Oklahoma, all states have a minimum threshold for coverage at 200% of the federal poverty guidelines. North Dakota currently has the lowest at 175%. New York currently has the highest at 405% of the federal poverty guidelines. SHIP Medicaid expansion programs typically use the same names for the expansion and Medicaid programs. Separate child health programs typically have different names for their programs. A few states also call the SHIP program by the term, "...children's health insurance program." Chip. States are allowed to use Medicaid and SHIP funds for premium assistance programs that help eligible individuals purchase private health insurance. As of 2008 relatively few states had premium assistance programs, and enrollment was relatively low. Interest in this approach remained high, however. In August 2007, the Bush administration announced a rule requiring states as of August 2008 to sign up 95% of families with children earning 200% of the federal poverty level, before using the funds to serve families earning more than 250% of the federal poverty level. The federal government said that 9 out of the 17 states that offer benefits to higher earning families were already compliant. Opponents of this rule argued that signing up higher income families makes lower income families more likely to sign up, and that the rule was incompassionate toward children who would otherwise go without medical insurance. Topic. Implementations California, California Healthy Families Program 
Utah, State Children's Health Insurance Program in Utah. Topic: Impact A 2018 survey of the existing research noted that the availability of chip coverage for children has led to improvements in access to health care and to improvements in health over both the short run and the long run. In 2007, researchers from Brigham Young University and Arizona State found that children who drop out of SHIP cost states more money because they shift away from routine care to more frequent emergency care situations. The conclusion of the study is that an attempt to cut the costs of a state health care program could create a false savings because other government organizations pick up the tab for the children who lose insurance coverage and later need care. In a 2007 analysis by the Congressional Budget Office, researchers determined that for every 100 children who gain coverage as a result of SHIP, there is a corresponding reduction in private coverage of between 25 and 50 children. The CBO speculates this is because the state programs offer better benefits at lower cost to enrollees than the private alternatives. A briefing paper by libertarian think tank Cato Institute estimated the crowding out of private insurers by the public program could be as much as 60%. Topic: Reauthorization. SHIP was created in 1997 as a 10-year program to continue past federal fiscal year 2007. Passage of a reauthorization bill was required. The first two reauthorization bills to pass through Congress would also expand the program's scope. President George W. Bush vetoed them as improper expansions. A two-year reauthorization bill was signed into law by the President in December 2007 that would merely extend current ship services without expanding any portion of the program. With the 2008 presidential and congressional elections giving Democrats control of the Oval Office as well as expanded majorities in both houses of Congress, SHIP was reauthorized and expanded in the same bill through fiscal year 2013. Topic: 2007 reauthorization. H.R. 976 In 2007, both houses of Congress passed a bipartisan measure to expand the SHIP program, H.R. 976. The measure would have expanded coverage to over 4 million more participants by 2012, while phasing out most state expansions in the program that include any adults other than pregnant women. The bill called for a budget increase for five years totaling $35 billion, increasing total ship spending to $60 billion for the five-year period. Opposition to H.R. 976 focused on the $35 billion increase in government health insurance as well as $6.5 billion in Medicaid benefits to illegal immigrants. Originally intended to provide health care coverage to low-income children, H.R. 976 was criticized as a giveaway that would have benefited adults as well as non-U.S. citizens. The program expansion was to have been funded by sharply increasing federal excise taxes on tobacco products. 
On the other hand, opponents said this proposed expansion was for families with annual incomes up to $82,600, 400% of the federal poverty level. On October 3, 2007, President Bush vetoed the bill, stating that he believed it would federalize health care, expanding the scope of SHIP much farther than its original intent. The veto was the fourth of his administration. After his veto, Bush said he was open to a compromise that would entail more than the $5 billion originally budgeted, but would not agree to any proposal drastically expanding the number of children eligible for coverage. On October 18, 2007, the House of Representatives fell 13 votes short 273-156 of the two-thirds majority required to override the president's veto, although 44 Republicans joined 229 Democrats in supporting the measure. H.R. 3963 Within a week of the failed veto override vote, the House passed a second bill attempting a similar expansion of SHIP. According to Democrats, the second bill, H.R. 3963, created firmer caps on income eligibility, prevented adults from joining, and banned children of illegal immigrants from receiving benefits. According to its opponents, however, this second proposed expansion was for families with annual incomes up to $62,000 300% of the federal poverty level. The Senate passed the measure on November 1, 2007, but on December 12, 2007, Bush vetoed this bill as well, saying it was, "...essentially identical." to the earlier legislation, and a House vote in January 2008 failed to override the veto. Pub. L. 110-173, which extended ship funding through March 31, 2009, and the President signed it into law on December 21, 2007. Topic. 2009 reauthorization In the wake of President Barack Obama's inauguration and the Democrats' increased majorities in both houses of Congress, legislative leaders moved quickly to break the political stalemate over ship expansion. On January 14, 2009, the House passed H.R. 2 on a vote of 290-138. The bill authorized spending and added $32.8 billion to expand the health coverage program to include about 4 million more children, including coverage of legal immigrants with no waiting period for the first time. A cigarette tax increase of 62 cents bringing the total tax on a pack of cigarettes to $1.01 an increase of tax on chewing tobacco from $0.195 per LB to 50 cents per LB as well as tax increases on other tobacco products was proposed as a funding source for the program's expansion. On January 29, the Senate passed the House bill by a 66-32 margin, with two amendments. The House accepted the amended version on a vote of 290-135, and President Obama signed the bill into law as Pub. L. 111-3 on February 4, 2009. Topic: 2010 Funding via Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. The 2010 passage and signing of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act included funding for CHIP through 2015. Topic: 
2015 reauthorization In 2015, Congress passed the Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act of 2015 and it was signed by President Obama. Topic: 2017 expiration and 2018 reauthorization for 10 additional years. CHIP expired on September 30, 2017. At the time, most states had sufficient funds to keep the program running for a period of months. On September 18, 2017, Senators Orrin Hatch and Ron Wyden introduced the Keeping Kids Insurance Dependable and Secure Kids Act Bill S.1827, which would fund CHIP until 2022. On November 3, 2017, the House of Representatives passed the Champion Act, which also would fund CHIP until 2022. On January 22, 2018, President Trump signed legislation that reauthorized CHIP for six years. Bill H.195 known as the Federal Register Printing Savings Act of 2017, including extension of Continuing Appropriations Act, 2018 passed the House by a vote of 266 to 150 and passed the Senate a vote of 81 to 18. Fifteen Senate Democrats and 144 House Democrats voted against the bill because they objected to ending a three-day government shutdown without legally enshrining the DACA program for certain undocumented immigrants. On February 9, 2018, Congress passed the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018, which reauthorized CHIP for an additional four years. The bill was passed by vote of 71 to 28 in the Senate and by a vote of 240 to 186 in the House of Representatives. President Trump signed the bill into law that same day, allowing for CHIPS extension through 2027. Topic: See also Cigarette taxes in the United States Graham Frost Health insurance in the United States Peachcare Texcare